Hey guys, welcome to this week's Chicago Face Up. I'm April Rose. Now this episode, we get real. It's all about hockey, down to its core, the real feel, the real connection to the game, what hockey is all about. Blackhawks winger Chris Versteeg and I compete at the highest level in air hockey. Okay, maybe it's not the highest level, maybe it's like the lowest level, but it's the ultimate air hockey championship. Now, I know you're dying to get to that, but first I had a chance to catch up with him and see how he's been feeling about recently being back with the team. Thanks for meeting up with us. Now, not that we got rid of you, but for a minute, you left us, not on your choice, but in 2010 after the cup, you got traded. How'd you feel when that came up? I mean, like you're a champion and all yeah. of a sudden it's like, goodbye. Well, it was, uh, it was tough. I remember talking to Stan. I was back home uh, in my hometown and Stan gave me a call and he, we kind of talked about it right after we won that it was going to be a possibility because of the cap and obviously the call came and I knew that uh, my days were up as a Chicago Blackhawk. I didn't think today would really happen again, but um, I told him if there's ever a chance that he could get me back, uh, please make it happen. Obviously he did, but it was really tough knowing that uh, you're traded only two weeks after winning the Stanley Cup. And, not going to really reap the benefits of it, but it was uh, it was an amazing experience. So you asked, you know, if you could make it happen, let me come yeah. back to Chicago. Is that normal? Do you think a lot of players have like a grow um, to kind of fall in love with the city and want to stay with that team? I think there's players. I've played in a lot of organizations where players really do fall in love with the city and the organization. And I haven't seen, you know, as many players truly fall in love with the city and, and an organization like the guys in Chicago from the 2010 team to this uh, 2014 team. Everyone just seems to uh, really enjoy the city, especially, and, and the fans mostly. Right, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Now, when I go to a game, fans are heckling you guys like crazy and they're shouting like obscenities and all this crazy stuff. Do you guys hear any of that if you're sitting on the bench or on the ice? Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> um, I remember this year actually I was playing in Florida and uh, this guy just kept heckling me the entire game, calling me brutal and he said, go back to Chicago, you know, Versti, you're no good here, go back to Chicago. Really? So obviously he had a little inside track on uh, where I was headed. Well, we're glad you're back. Yeah. No, we probably, I, I'm, I'm not mad. We secretly sent him there to, to convince say, you to come back. <laughs> yeah, maybe Stan had him implanted there right. and that's, that's kind of what put the, put the grain in their head. Now you have younger brothers, you're the oldest of how many brothers? Uh, two. two brothers, two brothers. And, and did you kind of torture them at all growing up Do you guys all play hockey together yeah we all played hockey um, my middle brother Mitch still plays uh, a professional in Germany in the DEL league and uh, my uh, littlest brother Bryce uh, he played till he was about 14 but he's a big baseball player and everyone knows the Versteeg back home knows that they like to uh, getting a little tussles with each other and, and fights with their brotherly love. <laughs> what did you love. do to your younger brother? Well, there's there's a lot, you know, the mini sticks would happen and What's uh, that? Mini sticks is when they, all the, little, the kids get on the floor and they have their mini hockey sticks and they're playing back and forth. If I was losing, I wouldn't like it and I would take it out of my little brother and I remember running away from him upstairs and right in front of my mom, he grabbed the back of my shirt and just suckered me right in the face. So <laughs> that was the last time I picked on my middle brother, right. but the littlest one, he got it for a few more years yeah. after that. You wear a pretty serious number on the ice. To Chicago, number 23 is epic. Are we gonna see like Air Versteg soon? Well, I'm working on pump up skates, but obviously okay. <laughs> uh, they didn't wanna take, uh, they, they didn't think I was a cool enough uh, commodity for that. But, hey, we think you're cool. You know, so I'll uh, buy some Air Versteg. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, you know, 23, obviously, it was given to me when I got here. Um, I've, I've got a lot of ribbing for it and I've heard a lot, but uh, obviously with uh, Michael Jordan, um, it, it's, it's pretty funny to wear that number in this city uh, and it's obviously pressure comes with it, but uh, uh, I'm not going to live up to Michael Jordan, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. If there was a hockey zombie apocalypse and hockey disappeared, what would you be doing? Just... Uh, Probably working with my old man selling tractors. You know? Selling tractors. Yeah, What's actually, up with that? I, you know, that's just. Uh, I went to school. Actually, I was starting to do my EMT for being a firefighter, and um, that's a long road and a lot of Did work. You graduate? No, it was just. Uh, actually, I got traded uh, from my WHL team at the time when I was about to start the classes. And Hold on, I'm getting out of breath. So. Hold on. I may need to be resuscitated for a second. Bye. Sorry, guys. Actually, I worked on that, so we had dummy. <laughs> I would have been perfect. But uh, no, there was, uh, yeah, I, I had the EMT I started, but uh, I never finished it. 
but I'm guessing that it would probably either been a firefighter, just like I said, working with my dad, uh, probably selling tractors. You got your hockey, you're focused on that. Anything else going on? There, there's, a, there's a lot, you know, right now I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, electronic dance music and maybe where I can uh, DJ an event and, and have, a, a good, have a great cause it goes towards. DJing's um, a pretty tough it, skill though. It really is. I'm learning. I'm going to start learning here soon. Uh, I, I got to go to a pretty, pretty amazing festival this past summer to Tomorrowland and got to see what it was really like and I, I would really like to uh, learn about it obviously. It's a, it's a whole career for these guys that they put in and a lot of work, but I'd really like to learn the ins and 